Okay, let's have a look at creating smart parts. So smart parts are things that we can bring in, as you can see on the left, uh, it's a very smart part by the glasses, but also it's going to uh, create the holes for those screws and it's going to put those screws in as well. Now what I want to be able to do is just to show you how we go about and create that to begin with. So let's have a look at how we create and use smart parts. So over in SOLIDWORKS, I'm just going to create myself to begin with a new document. And this is basically just going to be a representation of a panel. So on my top plane, I'm just going to drop a sketch, just going to draw myself a panel. It doesn't really matter how big this is. The numbers are arbitrary here, but we'll just say uh, 150 by uh, 150. Or I could just say that these two lines are the same. So I can just build an equal relation to that. And then I'm just going to extrude it. A typical depth that we might use is probably 18 mil. Let's just make it look a bit more realistic, a bit more like wood. So under organic, uh, we'll go for wood. Maybe we can make this just out of oak or something. I don't know. Whatever. Anyway, so I'm going to do a file save as, and I'm just going to save this onto my desktop just so I know where it is. And we'll call this, um, let's just call this uh, base representation or base rep. And I'm going to use this in an assembly. So I'm going to say file, make assembly from that particular part. It's just prompting me to choose my template. We'll drop my base rep into place and then I'm going to insert in another component to begin with. So let's go ahead and insert in my foot. So if I can find a foot, I've got this plinth foot here that's not smart at the moment. I haven't added any, added, added any smart features to it yet. So I'm just going to bring it into my assembly, drop it into place. And there it is. And now I'm just going to spin it around and actually locate this. So where I'm locating isn't actually that important, but I'm just going to say the right plane, I want to uh, be the same as the right plane. I'm just going to say that I want that, these two surfaces to be stuck together. And then just to stop it moving that way, I just need to find a plane that's going to help me. So let's go for my front plane and my front plane. So now this is locked into position. So what I want to do is every time I bring in a foot, it's going to actually cut for me the, the pilot holes for my screws and it's going to add my screws as well. So how do we do that? First of all, uh, we need to create the features that we want to copy. So I'm going to edit this particular part. So I'm just editing my base representation now. So it's just prompted me to save my assembly. So let's just save it again onto my desktop just so I know where it is. And I'm going to edit it and just put in a couple of pilots. Now to do that, I'm just going to select this surface and just look straight at it. And then I'm going to use my hole wizard to actually create some holes. So over here, I'm going to create a drill or a, just a regular through hole. It's going to be a drill size of just two mil. I just want it to be a pilot hole after all. So let's go for diameter two. Uh, the depth is going to be, let's say, I want it to be uh, 12 mil deep. Actually, that's good. And then my positions is over here. So if I just wake up my center point, I can just click on here. So there's one. There's two. Now it might take you a couple of minutes to do this, but you'll never have to do it again. And that's the good thing. So three over here. And then I'm just going to click OK. Now that goes ahead then and creates for me my pilot holes, as you can see. Then I'm just going to bring in the screws that I want to be associated with this as well. So over here, let's just bring up my SolarWorks toolbox. And we can dip into ISO. And then we'll have a look for some bolts and screws. And we'll have a look at some self-tapping screws. And I'm just going to use one of these over here. So to do that, I can just drag it over. It's then just going to find its own home, which is great. Just going to specify this is going to be a 3.5. And it's going to be in length. It's going to be 16 mil long, something like that. That's just probably a little long, actually. Let's make that 13 mil. And then we can go ahead and drop any others that I want. So I want one there. And I want one there as well. So this is the representation of what I want it to be able to do. So I'm just going to do a quick uh, update and a save. And then I'm going to tell SOLIDWORKS that I want to create a smart part. So to begin with, under Tools, it's under here. So Make Smart Component. First thing it asks for is which component I want to be smart. So it's this one. Next, it asks for any other components that are involved. So I'm going to say, well, look, every time you, I bring you in, I want you to pop these screws into position as well. And then it's asking for any features that might be associated with it. Now, nicely, when I click on that, it hides off any other components. So I can then drill down into these features and go ahead and pick that whole wizard hole, that two, two mil diameter hole, as you can see. And then when I OK it, SolarWorks is going to go ahead 
and it's now turned this foot into a smart part. And the way I know that it's turned it into a smart part is A, because we've got this smart feature over here. Um, but also what I'm going to do is I want, when I bring this in, I want to automatically locate it as well. So I'm going to say to SolidWorks that this edge here, I'm going to click on insert reference geometry and create a mate reference. And that is basically then going to make sure that every time I drag it in, it's going to try and lock that edge to whatever I'm hovering over. So let's just go ahead and do a file save. And then I'm going to, in fact, let's do a file save as, because I'm going to save this now as it is smart. So save as, let's just drop it into my library. And we're going to call this plinth foot. And this is going to be very smart, in fact. So let's just click on save. And then coming back over to my actual assembly now. So let's just go ahead and I'm going to save that as well. So I'm going to put this into an assembly to begin with. So I'm going to make an assembly from this particular part. Drop it into place and then add one of my feet. So over here I've got my, let's just dip into one of my libraries. So I've got my library parts over here. There's my plinth foot, very smart. And if I just hover and bring this over here, you can see that now it's actually snapping to those holes that I created. So really nicely snap into those holes. So we'll have one there, one there, one there, and one there. Now what I would do in reality is I'd then go and um, marry up some of the planes to stop them from spinning, because these will spin at the moment, but I would do that. All I need to do to activate it is to click on it. If I click on it over here, can you see there's a little kind of flash of lightning that's just appeared over it? And if I just click on it, it will then bring up my reference that I created. And it's just asking me to select my top face. So over here, if I just come and click on my top face, it goes ahead and not only creates some additional parts or adds my additional screws and things, but if I just open up the part on its own, you can see it's actually added the pilot holes as well. So really simple, really easy to use. And it's just going to save you a load of time. So just going back over to my assembly. Again, I'll show you that once more. Click on that. Click on our little lightning. Click on the bottom panel. And that's it. That's all you have to do to add an additional three components and add the holes for it as well. So you can take that to town, really, and create lots of other different things. Now, if I just show you a couple of others that I've got, I've got this mini fix bolt. Now, all I'm going to do with this, so this is like... Um, like a cam and pin fixing for knockdown um, stuff. So if I just drag in my housing, so I'm just going to drop my housing into position somewhere about there, and then I'm going to uh, move it into the correct position. So over here you can see, um, let's just get rid of that actually and do that again. So I'm going to bring in the housing and just lock it into position there. Again, there is a mating plane in here, so I've actually got something, or a a face or a plane on there called inside face of carcass which I'm just going to marry up with my inside face of the carcass that just means that it's in the correct position then and then all I'm going to do is take a center plane and just give it a value from this outside edge so I'm just going to set a distance of say 15 there then what I can do is activate it because it does some stuff so if I click on it up comes my little flash of lightning I can then click on it it then is asking for a series of faces. So it's asking for a face. Now, interesting, it's asking for a face here that I actually can't select. It's the one that's behind this thing. So instead, what I can do is if I just right click on that area, I can select other, and then it allows me to select other faces that are underneath any faces that are currently being seen. So it's that one there that I need. Then I need the face that the cam is on, as you can see, which is this one here. And then I need the, the other face, which is this one here. And then when I click OK, SolidWorks not only adds the hole, so if I just open up this part now, you can see that we've added the hole for our cam. But actually, if I spin it around, you can see that it's added this side bore. And it's also added another thing as well. If I just go back to my exploded view, you can see that it's actually added the hole for the post as well. So you can imagine if you were having to do that all the time, every time you wanted to do it manually, you'd be there a very, very long time. So it's a great way of being able to reuse certain information and uh, make sure that you're going to save time. OK, so coming back over to um, my model, we're almost kind of done. I would obviously have to fix this properly. One thing I haven't talked about yet is those global variables. Let's just have a look at those. If I just bring my model over to one side, let's just drop it there. I can actually then go ahead and change some global variables. So over in my window, we've got a series of equations. I'm just going to 
click on manage those equations and as you can see here we've got lots of different things that I can do so we've got a width so I could make this a bit narrower so maybe I'm going to do a 450 unit and when I click OK you can see that basically it changes it which is great there's a few things that I might need to change obviously my smart feature is going to need to be rebuilt down here if I wanted to have a different worktop thickness perhaps I was going to use a, um, a 50 mil work thickness in worktop instead you can see my unit drops ever so slightly I could have a larger um, overhang for example I might have a two inch overhang in which case the unit's going to get narrower uh, sorry um, shallower front to back so it's a really great way of being able to manage that kind of information so again if you're if you're doing things that are the same but different then this is a great way of being able to uh, manage that kind of data and then the last thing I want to do is just to add a door onto here so I'm going to uh, in fact I could do that just on this on this um, multi-body part because I can extract out that if I want to um, into a separate file which I can show you so I'm just going to sketch another um, block onto here if you like or another shape onto here so I'm just going to draw myself a door I haven't gone right out to the sides because obviously in kitchen cupboards there would be a, a gap so I'm going to say there's a 2 mil gap going down there and maybe a 2 mil gap going down there and then I'm just going to extrude that now again this is going to be equal to that global variable I've created called door thickness because it might be different which it is as you can see we've got a 24 mil door so that's my door. Again, I might have a slightly different door, perhaps a, an oak door, maybe. Who knows? Um, things like grain direction we can change as well. So if you uh, want to be able to do stuff like that, then we can obviously run it vertically instead if we want to, or whatever we want to do, that kind of thing. Um, I'm also just going to hide off this back piece just to make it a bit clearer what I'm going to do in a second, because I'm going to drop in a couple of hinges as well, because over here we've got the ability to, in my library parts, I've got a hinge that I'm using. Now this is just a bloom uh, concealed hinge. If I just drag that, in fact, sorry, I'm going to need to do that in the assembly. So let's just uh, save those changes, go back over to our assembly, and then drag in one of those hinges. So again, you can see it's snapping to that surface or this surface. Wherever I'm hovering over, it will snap to it. And again, that's just a simple mate reference. So we're just going to say OK to that. Um, just want to, in fact, sorry, it goes on the back of the door instead of this particular one. So let's just drop that onto the door as you can see there then we'll have another one down here so this is just going to have uh, two hinges I'm just going to marry up a couple of faces so I'm just going to say to SOLIDWORKS that that surface there and that surface there I want to be coincident then I'm just going to move these over a bit and just say that I want them to obviously sit uh, on that back surface there so again that's just a coincident relationship and then I just need to define some kind of distances to stop that moving so I'm just going to say for example I want a gap of let's say two inches or 50 mil between the top and the inside and then we're going to say the bottom and the inside so again just making a multiple selection using shift or control on the keyboard and that's 50 as well and then those are my hinges into place and because these are smart components I can actually just click on one it's going to bring up this dialog box to ask me to click on the side panel first then the door and if I OK it, it goes ahead and does everything it needs to do. So again, just to show you that again, click on the little lightning flick, click on my side panel, click on my door, and it goes ahead and does what it needs to do. And again, if I just open up that part on its own, you can see all the holes that it's put in. So it's put in the pilots in the carcass, and it's put in my large bore, and some pilots on the door as well. So that's uh, been done automatically for me, which is great. And then all I'm going to do is just to finish this off, I'm just going to add a handle. So in my library, uh, we've got a handle I can use as well, I think. Let's just go ahead and have a look to see if I've got a handle that I can bring into here. So this is a configuration part. I can either have a two or a 300 version. I'm going to go for the 200 version. And then to center this up, I'm just going to use a really cool mate called a width mate. So I'm going to select my outside surfaces of my carcass. And then I'm going to go ahead and click any other surfaces. Now you can see these aren't actually uh, parallel either, but it will still work it out for me. So a selection of four surfaces, click on my width mate, and that then locks that into position uh, right in the middle. So as you can see, the only thing I can do now is to move it up and down. So I just need to set a distance. And I'm just going to say from here to the top of my carcass, let's go for something like about 100 mil, maybe 75 actually. 
Uh, and again, obviously this does something as well. So if I click on this, we've got a little flash of lightning. I can click on that and that's then going to ask me to select the back face of my drawer or of my door. So I can just come over here, click on that surface. And not only does it go ahead and add my nice fixing and a washer, but also if I just open up this part on its own, it's put in the holes for my door as well. Now what I can do at this point is I can just right click on this body and insert it into a brand new part. Now there is a webinar all about this, um, which I can post a link to as well about how to do all of this kind of stuff. But basically we give it a name, click OK, and that will then take us into its own individual part file. So if we just get rid of that nasty texture, you can see now that we've just got an individual part. Now this is linked to the original part file that it came from. So if we make changes to that multi-body part, then this child part will be updated automatically as well. So that's a, again a great way of being able to uh, manage panel work really, really quickly. So just coming back over to here, might just bring open my panel and then we can just uh, put our back panel back on. And there's our finished design. So I showed you all about using smart parts there or intelligent parts. Um, it's a way that we can assign certain features to components. So when we bring something in, it does something, i.e. it cuts a hole, it adds a boss, something like that. We can add additional parts too, as in fixings or brackets or anything else that it might need. Um, it's a way basically of quickly being able to do repetitive things. You know, we don't want to have to do that all the time. So we just get SolidWorks to remember that kind of thing instead. We can save it in a central location so that we can share it with our peers. Uh, and it's basically a great way to help standardize any kind of procedures that we've got or using standard components. So just to recap, we had a look at multi-body part design, technical drawings, so being able to create those cut lists, and then we finished on smart parts. If you've got any questions or feedback, please get in touch uh, 01663 741405 or email us feedback at cadtech.com. Please give us your thoughts. Um, uh, again, if you've got anything that you'd like to see, please email us and we'll do our very best to show you um, how to do certain things. Thanks very much for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.